we even had an opening here, so I came down. It was a different owner back then. Um, after five years, the couple that owns it now um, renovated the entire place, and um, there were some staff changes. They offered me manager, and I took it. Fantastic. Now, did you are you always a waitress, and or did you have other careers? Um, I actually went to school for something else, um, but I think because I'm Italian, um, it's in my blood that I need to serve people and feed people and make people happy. So it's it's what I'm going to probably do the rest of my life, and that's fine. It's fun. Uh, um, now you said you did other things. What other things did you do? I mean, you said you went to school. I actually, something else? yeah, I went to school for um, social work to to work with the elderly, um, and. You know, I always waitressed or bartended while I went to school. But then, um, like I said, the kids were little. I didn't want to work Monday through Friday and put them in daycare. So I, I was able to work a couple nights a week doing this and stay home with the kids. What's your favorite part about doing this job? My favorite part is that you never know who's going to come through the door. And I find all of them very interesting. I just, like I said, it, it's going to be the Italian side of me where I just love to have company. So it's kind of like every day I have company here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of times uh, women will work as waitresses. They very few that I've come across that manage um, and also bartend in a bar. How do you find that as a woman in that type of role? Yeah, no, actually, I guess it would depend on where you work. But this place is 99% regulars. I know everything about them. They know everything about me. They come in every day. Um, and because I bartend and I cook and I manage, um, I'm not just behind the bar all the time. You know, I get to um, talk to people in a different way. If I'm cooking, I'll come out and be like, what do you want me to make you today? You know, it's a very casual, relaxed atmosphere here. Yeah, I noticed we're, um, actually the clouds are going by right now because we were just had uh, yet another one of our storms and yet there's still people uh, here, probably walked here or, uh, you know, drove in the storm just so that they could be here. So it definitely has a family atmosphere. Do you find that uh, that usually is the case? Yep, it's kind of like a chairs bar. You know, we have our Cliff Clavin, we have our Norm, we have our, you know, whatever, and they walk through the door like, you know, sir, just something, you know. Yeah. So we have nicknames for a lot of our customers because in a bar you don't really want to know everyone's last name or you can't. Yeah. But if you have like three people named Rick, you have Miller Light Rick. You have Martini Bob, you have Kino John, and that's if we're talking between us, they'll go Kino John meets, you know, a vodka tonic or whatever. So it's kind of that's the cheers aspect of it, yeah. Now you didn't go to school for bartending, but you sort of learned as you went. Yeah, I um, started as a waitress at Papa Grillo's, which is like a long gone restaurant in Seacon. and just you know, you pick up a drink at the bar, you watch how they make it, and then I took a couple day shifts. Um, you know, very slow and you could kind of experiment and I don't know, I just kind of progressed into like super duper bartender girl now. Uh, now, did they always have entertainment here or is that a new thing? It, the old 133 didn't have it. Uh, when they renovated, uh, we started with a little um, three-piece band at Rory and the Hounds um, and then found that people liked what we were choosing for entertainment and the area has a few other bars that have it. But we seem to have better quality, I think. We just have the best. And they just like to play here because they know the customers appreciate music. So how I get these guys to come in, you know, because we're small, but they do. And everybody loves it. Yeah. Now, what uh, criteria do you use to pick bands? Are these bands that you like or the owners like? Or how does that work? Um, I actually hire the bands. We have a house band on Thursday, two house bands on Thursday. So it's always the same. Friday, we don't have entertainment. Saturday is... I'll say it's classic rock, but it's going to be dance rock mm -hmm. and not like young kid rock. It's like you can get up and dance, then you're a good band for us, but not a wedding band. So uh, I get a lot of CDs every week, and I always go hear a band before I hire them because they can have a great CD, which means they hire the sound guy, mm -hmm. and then they come and you're like, okay, where are the three guys <laughs> on the CD? So I always go out and listen to them, and then we have, I'd say, five that we rotate, and then I'll leave a date open for a new band every now and then. Yeah. Yep. We actually came and we filmed a clip, one of the bands. Um, so we're going to actually watch that clip now and then um, we can talk some more. Okay.
Whenever you need me, I'll be there. I'll be around. That was great. I have to say, for the small space, I was expecting it to be really, really loud and overpowering, but it was actually not bad. No. It was not bad. Yeah, they had, we had a lot of fun while we were taping. Yeah, I have fun. I have fun when I'm working. And, um, yeah, that was four on the floor in there, actually, the rhythm section from Brass Attack. And they're just so professional. Like you said, it's not too loud. They can crunch into a corner so people can dance and have fun. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I just stand there sometimes and I can't believe the music I get here. <laughs> now, not only do you have entertainment, but you also have leagues. So we're sitting here in the area where your bowling trophies are. Um, pool. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Go ahead. It's a pool. We have several pool leagues. Um, that's been since the old 133 um, when they were on Gano Street. Um, and they're obviously very good. Uh, more than once they've made it to Vegas, which is um, you know a national competition. Wow. Um, we have we also have dart leagues. Um, you know we, we're going to try to start a high low jack league. We've had scrabble tournaments. Yeah. We always find something to do here. Yeah, it's a lot of good things for the community. A lot of things that they can be interested in. Now I understand you also do some charity work here. Too. Is that true? Yeah, that's um, we do a cystic fibrosis steak fry every year, and um, we bring the grill out into the back and. Um, cook steaks and salad and then we have some sort of a band and we have tons of raffles. Um, December we did a food drive uh, for the local uh, food shelters. Yep. Um, if, uh, we used to have a lot of bike runs, uh, scholarship fund type things. If we have a customer that's ill or whatever we'll have a little you know pasta dinner for them or whatever. Yeah. No they're very they're very good here and we constantly giving away you know certificates or raffle items and yeah. And how do you choose the, the uh, individual charities that you work with? Well, the ones that we have here where we know like the cystic fibrosis is a couple that comes in and it's their nephew and the food drive is just some of our regular customers. They do it every year but they chose us this year to be the host. That was fine. Um, they don't say no to too many people whether it's just a small gift certificate. Um, they're just very generous. Yeah. yeah. It is hard because everyone needs money now. Everyone's hurting. Yeah. Now, what is your particular role in these events? Do you do any of the uh, choosing of what the menu, or do you have any other uh, role in that, or do you just make sure that everything's taken care of? Yeah, kind of, it depends. Um, I'll do what they need me to do. Um, if it's you know going out and organizing raffle gifts, uh, I'm definitely here the day of, and you know running steaks from outside to inside. And yeah, we all you know half the customers become the staff that day. You, they don't work here, but when the event starts, all of a sudden you have somebody emptying the trash, you have somebody clearing tables, and they're not even really a part of it. So yeah. it's very easy to run something like that, yeah. Yeah, it's great because charity has a tendency to do that. It definitely brings people together. Oh, absolutely, yep. yep. Um, now, we also came for our karaoke event. Um, I have to say I'm one of the regulars that does come yes. to the karaoke here on occasion. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to watch that clip as great. well. You ready? Okay. Don't go trying some fashion. Don't change the color of your hair. Love it, I'll leave it. You better get a break. You better hit the bullseye to get so play. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while Big Bell revolves it. the clip with me singing no but good. um thanks for that money to keep that out of there <laughs> <laughs> who was the um the dj for the dj that? his name is big bill that's his stage name his name is bill thomas he's from riverside so local guy you know a lot of people follow him everywhere he plays he's been here you know probably eight years now yeah and he, he navigates the songs and the singers pretty well because he knows who they are and what they like to sing 
Yeah. yeah. He's got a pretty good voice himself. Yeah, yeah. No, he's not, he's not bad at all. Yeah. How long has he been doing that here? Eight, about eight years, I guess. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, you know, and we have some people that, are, again, like the bands, they come in and you're floored by the talent, even though it's karaoke, you're like, holy cow, she can sing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I notice everybody has a really good time, but they also seem to be very respectful of each other, which doesn't usually, well, I can't say it doesn't usually happen, but sometimes you don't see that. You know, I see that a lot now, and with a type of place, whether it's a band or karaoke, you have to behave yourself. There's no need, you know, so we kind, I have a few times I have to go up to people and go, hmm, you know. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't allow, it. that's the bottom line. Like, you can have fun, but you don't have to be raunchy. That's true. Yeah. That's completely true. Yep. Um, so now you have karaoke, you have live bands, mm -hmm. um, and you bartend, and you're the manager, so you help select all those things. What else do you do here? Anything else, or is that enough? No, I cook one night a week also. They just let me, I just started doing that about a year ago. We, we were short one cook, and I love to do that on my one night a week because I come up with my own specials, and people call me out of the kitchen and say, Jane, what am I having tonight for dinner? And Yeah, no, that's fun. And, um, and on Sunday we have Motown, so that's a totally different type of music, so, yeah, no. Like I said, it's in my blood, I'll do whatever they need me to do. Do you ever see yourself owning your own place? No, thank you. <laughs> um, they pretty much, the owners, um, let me do whatever I want, and I don't have to pay the bills or get the uh, licensing and fix the furnaces. I just, they're just really cool, like, because they didn't own or were never in this business. They had other businesses, so, they really let me do whatever I want, which is a little scary sometimes, but we have each other's back. I want them to make money. I need to make money. We're all in it. The people that have worked here have been here, you know, we don't have transient workers. They've all been here for years. So, yeah, we'll look that, that pot works out. Yeah, you had said um, during um, our conversation that they were actually customers here at first, and then they bought the place, so they weren't in the bar business at school. Right, yeah, he was an, a construction guy and used to come here and play pool, Tony, with his wife Teresa, and the old owner hired him to do all the, the renovating. And then soon after, the guy's like, yeah, you know, I don't want it anymore. And Tony was devastated, and he's like, I just worked, you know, up, like blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. So he and his wife pretty much mortgaged their life to buy this place. and. So they have, you know, they're not looking at it just as owners, but they've been the customer here. Yeah. So I think that's what makes this place tick. Yeah, their heart's in it. Absolutely, yep. And it sounds like your heart's in it as well. It now, is. are you the the only three employees, or are there other people who work here as well? Yeah, no, um, I bartend Trisha and um, Jerry. Those are the full-time. Uh, we have, uh, you know, Demi and Carrie, Waitress and Jen, and Claire is a, a one-day girl. And then we have the head cook is Paul. He runs the whole kitchen, and Tom is the other cook. Uh, a couple cleaning guys, and that's all of us. It's small, but we've all been here forever. So it's basically family, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. excellent. That's excellent. Well, I think that's all we have for today. Um, this is um, Nancy Green roaming. Reach out roaming. Excuse me. Um, uh, TNT's 133 Club. And thank you, Jane. No, thank it's you. Pleasure. For, thank you for this invitation.